Hey there, this is Melorian, and this is going to be the second game of the month-long tournament. I actually thought I'd be doing a Monster Mash versus Monster Mash against Lizardmen, but it turned out they're actually against Vampire Counts. So the, the game here we got was Dawn Attack, and two of the characters you can see here, he has the Necromancer in the back, and he also has a Vampire in his Ghoul unit. Over here, though, he also has another Vampire in the Grave Guard. Uh, he has a Vampire Lord, and that uh, cool-looking zombie dragon is actually a Terrorgeist. So like I said, it was Dawn Attack, and for an army like mine, I don't really care about Dawn Attack because, uh, yeah, I can just redeploy as I wish. The way it ended up is I got the Reavers on the left, then I got my Dragon Mage, my Arc Mage with the Sun Dragon, the two Phoenixes, then the Bolt Thrower, the Griffin, uh, with a noble on it, then my spearmen and my archers. And uh, the kind of way where this did go not the way I wanted is the whole fact of all the tough stuff it got on the right. So whereas normally my archers and my spearmen like to avoid combat and kind of like clean things up later, yeah, they're going to be dealing with the hardest stuff right away and the fastest because remember, the vampire lord will be the general, so only the stuff in that far right will be marching. Otherwise, he has two units of dogs on the far left, then some Crypt Horrors, the big thing of Ghouls, yeah, I already pointed out the rest. Uh, the only other thing to say is those Grave Guard actually have shields, not great weapons. So, uh, pretty much when I was first deploying here, I was kind of thinking I'd just pick on the center and uh, kind of leave the right alone. But I quickly decided after that, that, you know, with that thing being the Vampire Lord and how fast he'll be cleaning up some points over here, I'll probably need to redeploy. However, he's going to get the first turn. So he gets the first turn, he's kind of rushing on up there, and I gotta say, that Terrorgeist is an issue. Because, sure, I can fly around and dance around, but that Terrorgeist, you know, can come over and just scream off a uh, Phoenix, just like nothing. So, I gotta be very careful with the way I deal with that Phoenix, I have to be very careful with the way I deal with that obviously gonna be Blender Vampire Lord. So, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So my turn, I pretty much set up just for the counter charge. All my dragons and stuff come over here. I throw all my dice and a big fireball at his Terrorgeist, which he uses the scroll on. But I actually get pretty lucky because my archers do like three wounds to the Terrorgeist. So I got really lucky there. And pretty much at this point, yeah, Spearman just backed up. And I'm hoping he fails a charge or something. And then I'll go and I'll attack those knights. Uh, he actually fails the charge. He wanted to fail the archers. I was going to be actually okay with that, but he failed it. Terror guys came down. Oh, man. Okay, in his magic phase, I thought, okay, I can shut down pretty easy. You know, he has four level ones. I have one level four. I have the reroll with the, the book. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, he had a low casting, and even with the reroll, I failed to dispel. So he got two wounds back on the terror guys. Uh, he then sc screamed off five of the archers, and otherwise... Things just kind of slowly working their way up. So on my turn, I need to delay these ghouls. So it's time for my uh, brave little eagle to go up there and take one for the team. And otherwise, it looks like this. So again, I'm trying so hard to take down that terror guys because that would make my life so much easier. But uh, yeah, my magic phase basically does nothing for me. And then uh, my archers do nothing this turn. And then I hit him with the bolt thrower that does three wounds. So he would have died except for those two wounds he healed up last time. So unfortunately, there's still a terror guys. That's an issue. Uh, otherwise, on the far left, not much is really happening. Basically, my reaver's sh shooting at his dogs. And he's happy losing the one dog per turn. <clears throat> so his turn, he's going to be charging into the eagle. And we all know what's going to happen here. And, uh, yeah, what happens on this side is he charges the archers, I flee, and then he charges the spearmen, and I flee, just to try and make sure it's going to be a failed charge and open everything up. <clears throat> you know, I don't want to take any chances that the way things will be mixed up, that he'll get a lot of extra kills from killing spearmen or whatever it is, you know what, just double flee, now we can go and do our own thing. So otherwise, it looks like this. Of course, he kills the eagle and he reforms to come back. Uh, the terror guys comes over and in his magic phase, he's not able to heal anything up. So, you know, he's only able to do uh, two wounds. I re uh, ward one of them. So only one there. Uh, Graveguard turn around. And otherwise, it's uh, pretty much supercharge time. So supercharge time is this. I have 
the Phoenix going in the rear, a Phoenix in the flank, my Sun Dragon on the flank, and my Dragon Mage in the front. And really, this is going to be the big push, because either I'm going to destroy these guys, and I'll be well ahead in points, and he'll start crumbling a little bit, or he's going to uh, start kicking my butt, and I'm in trouble. Uh, otherwise, the Griffin's just there, just to finish off that Terrorgeist. And over here, it's kind of hard to get the picture of them, but uh, my Archmage is going to be in a challenge with his Vampire Lord. Over here, uh, I kind of, because he's turning around and I want to get to his bunker, I kind of make more of a move. So I'm coming over to, to get to there and shoot up another dog. Just because, you know, hey, you know, Reavers are crap, but zombies are also crap. And, you know, if I can get a double charge into the zombies, I can probably beat that bunker just with his fast cap. Otherwise, yeah, I was able to get off two spells, pretty meaningless stuff, but with that ward save, you know, he, he goes to attack me, I don't care if you're strength 7, I have a 3 plus ward, he does one wound to my Archmage, that's it, and after everything else is said and done, he is completely crumbled, and that is huge. So after the, his crumbling roll, the one wounded uh, unit of dogs, they're going to disappear, I, I shot off a Cryptor, or maybe even two by now, looks like. Uh, also killed the Terrorgeist, so really this was a huge turn, uh, killed lots of stuff, and he's going to be scrambling to try and come back now. So on his turn, he charges the Griffin. I, you know, I only overran seven inches anymore, and I would have been safe. I tried fleeing, didn't work out, he caught me. Uh, over here, he charges into my Reavers, and hopefully my Always Strike First will save me. And after that, yeah, I beat up the, the guys on the left, although now his Crypt Wars have turned to look at me and his bunker turned around too, so my Reavers won't have an easy time. And he also got off Van Hells to try and turn around his Grave Guard as well. On my turn, another Supercharge. I got both the Dragons and a Phoenix going into this Grave Guard. I liked it a lot better when I was going to be hitting the rear, but hey, the front should be okay too. And even though they have Killing Blow, you know, they're only going to be Strength 3 because of the Phoenix... And I have ward saves and stuff, too. Uh, one thing that really didn't help is I thought, hey, let's do Apotheosis so I can at least heal back that one wound. Well, I get it with Irresistible Force, which is a small template. Now, normally that wouldn't be so bad because I'd also hurt him a lot. But because of the way that dragons are, I'm basically just hitting my three monsters. So this peels away the Charm Shield off my Dragon Mage. I roll a one on the dragon. I do a wound to my mage again, so she didn't even really gain anything. Uh, amazingly, my star or my moon dragon rolled a six for its ward save, and then my phoenix lost the wound too, and then I lost the rest of my dice. So, yeah, good magic phase. Uh, otherwise, after it all, it looks like this. My uh, reavers just pass a march test, and they're just dancing around. Uh, the one phoenix just getting in position to try and threaten whatever comes at me and in that combat there I issue a challenge with my Archmage he rejects it with his well just rejects it I send his vampire to the back and after all the thunder stomps and everything uh, he's down just to four models and a vampire so very deadly otherwise on his turn not too much he can do uh, he pretty much just turns around to face my my guys there uh, in the combat, he is wiped out, so all those Grave Guard are gone in that Vampire. I just can't reform to turn because my guys are all like base to base. So on my turn here, I'm just trying to set up for a last turn hurrah to try and get some more points. Uh, with the magic phase, I'm able to kill lots of those zombies, so that does very well. His bunker is almost dead the way it is. And on his turn, it looks kind of crazy, but this is what he does. He takes out his Necromancer, the zombies walk out of the line of sight, the vampire runs into the woods, and normally this is like, what are you doing? And there's also his uh, Crypt Horrors going to the building. Well, you got to remember that on this tournament, you get one point for playing the game, one point for winning, one for killing the enemy general, and one for tabling the opponent. So he is just making 100% sure I will not table him. So that's basically all he's trying to do here. He knows he lost the game, he's just spreading out. So on my turn, a phoenix goes after the necromancer. Uh, the dragon mage goes after the vampire. And yeah, the ne <laughs> that poor necromancer didn't stand a chance. And the vampire actually goes and kills my little mage, the little fire mage guy on top. But then the dragon kills the vampire. And that's the game. So there you have it. It was a win for the high elves and flying around and all this stuff. 
And again, I, I think really the real turning point, obviously, in the game is that big, huge multi-charge onto his knights with his vampire lord. You know, I had to sacrifice two of my core units there to make it happen, and that was a good chunk of points. But obviously, once he, you know, lost that and the crumble and the terror geist, yeah, then I really had the control, and the, yeah, things just really went downhill from there. I think one thing he could have done differently that could have really changed that fight is that if he would have taken the challenge with the unit champ, well, then all of a sudden that Blender Lord with Strength 7 could have just killed the Sun Dragon probably all by himself, and uh, without extra combat res, you know, that could have turned things around. I don't know if it's enough to actually save the unit. It could be a thing where, okay, great, you didn't crumble this turn, you know, now you're going to die next turn type thing, but it's one of those bad situations, right? If you got a unit that's fighting, man, what was that, like four monsters, you're going to have a bad time. So uh, there you kind of go. Uh, I got three possible points out of the four because I didn't table them. Uh, again, it was a type of thing, too, where you could see after that big fight happened, and I, you know, you could see how fast the Grave God were dying, that he just wasn't having fun. So that's it's one of the killers with this army because I really like the look of my High Elves. I like the way it plays. I love using them, but my opponent always hates it. <laughs> I don't know if hates the right word, but they're not enjoying it like when I'm just going crazy with my orcs and goblins or something. So there you have it. Uh, either way, thanks for watching. Bye.